so the drought ends. Amongst the frenzy of the recent Nintendo Direct, at last we have acquired fresh details concerning not only Twilight Princess HD, but finally, Zelda Wii U. However, these new insights may not utterly be isolated in the scheme of the Zelda series, but a part of a great hope. To begin with, let's discuss the link between Twilight Princess HD and Zelda Wii U. One thing I found notable is the amiibo functionality between the titles, in which data from Twilight Princess HD can be carried over to Zelda Wii U. What does this indicate empirically? We can speculate that Zelda Wii U begun development in 2011, after Skyward Sword, and we can infer that Twilight Princess HD may have begun development sometime in 2013. If there is amiibo functionality between Twilight Princess and Zelda Wii U, then we can infer that this is a gameplay decision that was made before the reveal of TPHD. Now, what does this all mean? Well, it indicates that there is more than a superficial connection between both projects. After all, IG Anuma himself directed Twilight Princess. Additionally, he criticized the title for having a bland overworld. This remake may remedy his previous criticism. But this is where things get even more interesting. If data can be transferred from Twilight Princess to Zelda Wii U, that would imply story connections between both games. After all, in Twilight Princess, we do see the Ordon Goats. We see the same animals in Zelda Wii U. We even see similar landmarks. The Great Bridge of Hylia appears both in Twilight Princess and possibly Zelda Wii U. Now, this may be too early to conclude appropriately, but perhaps Zelda Wii U has something to do with Twilight Princess's story. A sequel, a prequel, or perhaps just a timeline continuation. Speaking about the new teaser, as many have already pointed out, Link has some sort of a longsword, a new shield design, and a curious Sheikah book. But what can we make of all this? We have the perceptive player essence the noble Pone Apples, the iconic Dr. Wily, and the astute Commonwealth Realm to give their initial thoughts. Now, how about the Direct? Speechless. Completely speechless. Especially yes. the first five minutes. Zelda, were you was on the screen? And the only thing I did was screaming. Everybody screamed. They want to give us a little bit of taste of the game, so we get more and more hyped up. Until we get to each you, where they will just blow it away, blow away the composition, and just make sure that Nintendo is back. They need to do something, they need to act. Because Triforce Heroes didn't really sell well or sold good or anything. It was a uh, link between worlds uh, sold initially more. Just with the launch it sold at least double. So they need to do something. I think we will see more crafting in this game. And I also think that uh, that will also apply to the tunics this time, Andy. Uh, so you will have different type of armors. Uh, compared to previous uh, Zelda titles. I think they will give you complete freedom when it comes to how Link will appear in this game. It will be completely up to you. And it's also uh, in accordance with the foundation of giving as much freedom to the player as possible in this installment. I think it could be very Skyrim-like, like very Elder Scrolls-like. That. that sword is maybe a drop from an enemy, and it's coming out like when Wind Waker, you can pick up enemies, the swords, maybe you can pick up enemies, loot, like shields and swords. That would be really, really cool. Yeah, I have to 100% agree with the whole Skyrim thing with The Legend of Zelda Wii U. I think that's going to be the big hook with the game. The fact that they did show off that kind of have different gear, different weapons. It just keeps things interesting out in the open field. And that's the one kind of downfall sometimes Zelda falls into. You have the same sword, you have the same shield. You know, and there's not really any benefit. I mean, other than fighting certain enemies, you get certain things. But other than that, enemies don't really do anything to you other than like a rupee drop here or there. But if they can make it to where you can craft your own gear, you can get different um, weapons and stuff like that, it's going to be more exciting to go out to the field and battle enemies and possibly have like secret dungeons and secret areas. And if you combine that with what Link Between Worlds did with being able to travel to any dungeon and take on any task. I mean, think about how much better your upgrading would be if they had that in there. So yeah, I agree. I think they're going to follow something like that. And I know you said something about there was a there was an article a while back where Eji Anuma did say that he was looking at Skyrim as far as uh, what he wanted to do. Um, and I think that's a great that's a great game to look at because um, Skyrim is amazing. So yeah, that's my big prediction too. I think it's really going to be uh, more RPG elements in there. And I actually made a video about that recently. So that's kind of what I think they're going to go in the direction of, just so you have stuff to do in the open world and uh, plenty of 
different variety as far as combat goes. And I'm 100% certain that uh, it could be one of the biggest games we have ever seen. Uh, because based on the gamepad map, which we saw during the Game Awards last year, and now this short sequence showing this small, tiny little section, how gigantic and how vast uh, those areas are, I just believe that this game is definitely a Genumus Magnum Opus. No question about it. I think it's going to be a little bit like, you know you had to upgrading system in Skyward Sword? I think something like that, but more advanced and integrated with crafting and stuff. I think it's going to be a very advanced version of that, because that was quite basic, essentially. Speaking about Twilight Princess HD, it seems that individuals are of two minds regarding its visuals. I can certainly see why some are disappointed regarding the graphics of the game. While we have only seen one trailer, I do see where they are coming from. After all, there are some mods out there that appear more aesthetically attractive. I was wondering what are your thoughts concerning the title? I, I don't think I, for Twi for Twilight Princess I don't think there's gonna be hinting to anything. I just I just feel like it's 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 been rushed. It's it's, uh, it's one of their somehow favorite Zelda game for many people, and they knew that you know when Waker HD did really really well. Let's try to do more HD ports. I think the Wii U just turned into be you know basically Smash HD ports and. In Splatoon for me, uh, but I, 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 for for the Zelda part for the predictions, I just think that I hope they go because they said they were influenced heavily by the Elder Scrolls, and if they make Zelda Wii U kind of like an Elder Scrolls type of game, it, I think it would be phenomenal and it would be groundbreaking. It would be something new to the table. And Twilight Princess HD also looks promising, though I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't change also the art style for the cuts. Yeah, the cutscene looked a bit weird. Look, it didn't look very. Good, but when they switched to the gameplay, it looked amazing. I have mixed feelings about the remake as well, but what did you guys over at Twitter think about the direct? Chris H says, Zelda U looked great, intrigued by the landscapes and sword, curious about TPHD gameplay changes, perfectly fine with Linkle. Matt G says, surprised that with all these delays, there hardly isn't a visual change. So why did they decide not to show it before? And Maka of Nintendo Box says, Zelda Wii U, awesome, duh. Also, Sweet Longsword, TPHD, looks half baked visually. And a poor amiibo, Linkle, Major Waifu. Those were all very good points. Now, what exactly will we see at E3 2016, especially with all the NX talk? However, there is another mystery involving Twilight Princess, a tale that few have even touched on, and it is definitely a tale that will be told next time. Special thanks goes to Player Essence, Pwnapples, Dr. Wily, and Sea Realm for being a part of this video. 